Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the B&H Virtual Event Space. Happy to welcome back friend of the show. I call it a show. I don't know. Show, webinar, series, workshops, whatever you want to call them. But uh, Reza Malayeri, Reza, what's going on? How are you doing today? Hey, Scott. Thank you so much for having me back. It's, it's our pleasure to have you back. We love seeing that smiling face. We know you're going to bring a ton of great information. So super excited to see what you have planned. For those who are tuning in, thanks for joining us. Reza's talking about the Sony A1. So if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. We've got it at the B&H store. Great camera, wonderful camera. Want to give a huge thanks to our sponsors over at Sony. So thank you very much to them as well. And as always, you know the drill here. If you have any questions that you want to get over to Reza, please feel free to get them in. You can use the Zoom chat, the Q&A. Uh, if you're joining us on Vimeo or Facebook live stream, you can use the comment section and we'll make sure to get them over to him. But Reza, I know you've got a ton of content to go over, tons of settings, autofocus things, everything everybody wants to know that they have questions about. So I'm going to get out of the way and step to the side and hand over the mic to you. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you guys today discussing all of the fun stuff that uh, we put together for today's showcase with the Sony Alpha 1. Uh, as Scott was saying, a big thank you to everybody at the B&H event space for hosting today and to Sony Alpha for making this presentation possible. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of action packed things to go through today. I'm excited to bring you this presentation. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So um, I'll give you guys a quick little uh, sneak peek of our, our overhead setup here. Uh, we have the Sony A1 right here, uh, along with some of my favorite lenses. As we go through some of the different things that we're going to be discussing, I'll show them to you guys here um, on the overhead camera. Uh, but uh, without further ado, let's get started on today's Sony A1 showcase. So as you guys know, it's all about uh, high speed shooting and slow motion video. Uh, the A1 is a flagship camera that is just lightning fast uh, in photos and does amazing slow motion videos. So that's what we're going to be going over in today's showcase. So um, thanks to everyone for attending. And um, let's go over some of the reasons why I think the A1 is the best camera for high speed shooting and slow motion video. So um, before we get started, I'm just going to give you guys a quick little background into me, who I am, and uh, some of my areas of expertise. Uh, I am a professional wedding and portrait photographer and cinematographer, uh, and I also do some drone work uh, as an FAA Part 107 remote pilot. So hopefully one of these days I'll be able to visit BNH and check out the Air Peak from Sony. That's an exciting thing that I'm looking forward to trying, but I have experience in weddings, um, filmmaking, portraits, and drones. That's some of the things that I'm into and I enjoy doing. Um, my work's been published on Sony Alpha Universe, uh, in addition to other creative uh, publications like DP Review and 42 West. Um, I have 10 plus years experience as a creator and educator, just like many of us got my start on YouTube, just based off of my creative passions, and then took it from there and just continue to grow and learn and learn and learn. Um, I'm based over here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest in Seattle, Washington. So uh, if you guys are ever out this way, you know, send me a line and we'll go out and create together. But uh, that's just a little bit about me personally and some of my areas of expertise. Um, let's take a look at uh, some special projects that I've been able to work on, uh, been able to work with some of my favorite local and national brands on editorial projects that I'm proud of. I mostly uh, recently presented on behalf of Sony Alpha at uh, Glazer's Photo Fest here in Seattle, uh, discussing why it's so important to be a hybrid creator in today's competitive media landscape. Um, so uh, you may have seen me out there uh, giving a presentation on hybrid editorials. But uh, one of my proudest achievements has been the social justice campaign that I produced in partnership with Sony Xperia and uh, Sony Alpha Collective Ambassador Mahesh Thapa, also known as the Starving Photographer. 
Um, the project was called Artists in Activism, and it was a collaborative project with Sony where we spent several weeks telling the story of a group of artists activists. Um, so, you know, I've always been a huge fan of Sony, and um, it's obvious that they're very committed to the community of artists that they serve, which is us. Um, so if you want to check out more of my work on the Artists in Activism project, check out Sony Alpha Universe and just type in Artists in Activism. You can also find me on DP Review, where I've done some drone education, and obviously here, right here on the BNH Event Space Online, where we had a presentation uh, with one of my other uh, partners uh, on the Reflex Lights, um, also an ambassador for Vanguard USA. And so these are just some quick looks at some of my other works and where you can check out some more of my uh, creative education. So today's showcase, let's take a look at an overview for what we're gonna be discussing uh, today with regards to the A1. So um, we're gonna be talking about why the A1 is such a great camera for hybrid shooters. Uh, we're gonna go over and look at a high level overview of some of the main flagship features of the A1. Um, and the showcase itself is going to be all about high frame rate uh, photography and um, how you can capture really fast moving subjects with the A1 at 30 frames per second. Uh, we're going to look at how we do that with humans, birds, and animals. Uh, the IAF capabilities of the A1 are amazing. It can track human eyes, bird eyes, and animal eyes and do that at a very fast rate with a very high level of precision. So uh, we're gonna look at examples of how we do that. Uh, when it comes to autofocus, we're gonna look at uh, other examples uh, using an athlete that we went to a sports track with and did some really fast motion in terms of sprints and some sports action with football, just throwing the footballs and having fun. Um, so, we're gonna look at how we do all of that in photos and videos, talk about how to set up for that, some of the things that you need to consider when you're going to set up your camera to be able to do that. And um, at the end, we'll go over some of the gear uh, that I use, like I was showing you guys earlier, some of my favorite lenses that I use with the A1, why they're so beneficial to use in high-speed shooting scenarios and um, basically just walk you through some of that information and allow you to ask questions regarding the gear or the camera or anything else you might want to know about. So we'll have that at the end. Uh, there is also a full video that you guys can watch that we created for this showcase where you can actually watch the whole thing, see how we went through our different um, environments, shot the bird, shot the animals and the athletes. So check that out on the BNH event space. Uh, social media pages, and you can watch that whole video uh, and get uh, some more insight onto what we did out in the field. So uh, without further ado, let's look at some of the steps you'll want to be taking and the settings you want to be changing on your A1 in order to set up your camera to capture high speed bursts at 30 FPS. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to make those changes on the A1 with the overhead camera. Uh, which happens to be a ZV-1. I know we're not talking about any other cameras today, but uh, I just love the ZV-1 and, and its ability to let you do the uh, product showcase. So we'll be looking at those settings uh, and going through them as we discuss them here. So uh, some of the steps that you're gonna wanna take are to change some settings on the camera in addition to having some additional accessories and then making some notes about the types of lenses that you're using so that you can maximize the full performance of the A1. Um, the very first thing that you're gonna wanna do is change the dials on the camera to get ready to shoot at high speed at 30 FPS. So um, when we do that, let's flip over so I can kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And so you can see over here, you have your, your main dial over here, and then you have your uh, AF dial, on, on the secondary ring on the uh, left side of the camera. And then you have your uh, mode dial for the different types of burst rates that you can do. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is set your main dial to M so that you can be in manual mode for photography. And then you're gonna wanna set your um, focusing mode to AFC and that's for autofocus tracking. So let me see if I can 
show you guys. You guys can kind of see it right there, right over here. It's set to AFC. And then uh, for the 30 FPS, you're going to want to change the mode dial to be set to H+. H+, is the mode that allows you to get uh, 30 frames per second. It's the maximum fastest burst rate that the A1 can offer. So make those three changes. And then what you're going to want to do from there is to navigate to the shooting menu on the A1. So let's take a look at that here. And in the shooting menu of the A1, um, you're going to want to select your image quality settings and then change the file format to RAW. Now, you don't have to just shoot in RAW on the A1 to get 30 FPS, but obviously that's going to give you the best um, amount of data to work with in post-production. Uh, but if you choose to, to want to shoot like even higher bursts than uh, what RAW offers, you can change it to JPEG or HEIF as well. So basically that's the step we're going to take right now. We're going to go over into the settings of the camera and we're going to go to the shooting menu. So the shooting menu is the very first one. You guys can see it. Um, let me see if I can get a little bit closer here for you. So shooting is the number one on the camera menu there. And what you're going to want to do is go over to image quality and you want to set your file type to raw. So when you set the fi file to raw, the raw setting that allows 30 FPS is compressed raw. So make sure you're set to raw and compressed. Otherwise, like I was saying, you can use HEIF or JPEG. So that's one of the first things you're going to want to do. Um, after you've set uh, to raw compressed, you're going to want to go over to the focusing menu on the A1. And that is under right here. Go and look at AFMF. So over there, you can see um, the AFMF menu. So um, you want to change the AFC focus mode from balanced emphasis, the emphasis to release. So when you go into that mode, so the, pardon me while I figure out my lefts and my rights, but basically this is upside down on the overhead camera. So I'm trying to figure out how to get it to the right view for you guys. So let's see, I gotta go one more. And there we go. So basically when you're in the focusing menu of the A1, what you're trying to change is the priority set in AFC. The reason you want to change this is because when the camera is doing its calculations, it's trying to consider whether it should be um, balancing between focus and uh, frame rate versus just focusing on focus or just focusing on frame rate. So balance is kind of in between. But if you go in there and you change it to release, what it's going to do is make sure that it's it's only focused on bursting as fast as it can go. So if it's balanced, it's going, should I focus? Should I burst? If it's set to release, it's just bursting while it's focusing uh, and making sure it doesn't drop frames while it's bursting. So that's the second thing. The first thing is you set it to manual. You uh, set it to AFC. You put it in high plus. Then you went over and you changed the file type to raw compressed. And then the next step was that you put the AFC emphasis to release. So once you've got those things all set, um, the next thing you want to do is make sure that your A1 shutter is set to electronic. The A1 has an amazing, um, very nice uh, mechanical shutter. But in order to go all the way up to 30 FPS, you want to make sure you are in electronic shutter only. Um, it moves so much faster and it, it gives you those burst rate capabilities. So make sure you've set your shutter to electronic. And then once you've set it to electronic, the other final two considerations are going to be that you um, keep your shutter at 1 250th or higher and that you're using a lens that supports 30 frames per second. Excuse me. So uh, the 1 250th or higher is uh, a requirement. So if you go under 1 250th, it's not going to be able to burst at 30 FPS. And if you're using a lens that doesn't support 30 FPS, 
uh, the motors aren't going to be able to keep up with those blazing fast calculations that the A1 is doing. Um, it's going at, you know, 120 calculations per second of auto exposure and autofocus. It's really, really fast. And in order to translate that through the lens, it needs a lens that is also capable of keeping up with that. And so uh, hopefully we'll be able to make this uh, PDF available for you guys to where you can go and look up the compatible lenses. Uh, there's a link in step six that I have that shows you which lenses are compatible with 30 frames per second. Now, uh, for me, I generally stick to G Master lenses. Those are my favorite lenses for maximum compatibility and maximum performance with the A1. Uh, <laughs> I like to tell my friends that, um, you know, why buy a Ferrari if you're gonna put diesel fuel in it? And the A1 is definitely a Ferrari when it comes to cameras. So in order to get the most best performance from it, I pair it with G Master lenses, specifically uh, G Master lenses that are on the list of compatible um, 30 FPS. So for example, this is my 85 GM. It's one of the first G Master lenses that were released. And this one is only capped at 20 FPS. Uh, but if you look at probably one of the fastest, latest GM lenses, this is the 135. It has XD linear motors, and those XD linear motors um, are just lightning fast. They can move the elements uh, and keep up with those uh, AF and A calculations. So those are, in a nutshell, the six things you're going to want to do to get the camera ready to go uh, with the 30 FPS stills mode of the A1. So um, before I move on, I just wanted to check and see if there was any additional questions that anyone had. Um, I think, I think Ray, guys, no, no questions on that front. So I think we can keep moving on. Reza. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and move on to some examples here. Uh, once we got our camera set, we then headed into the butterfly garden at the Woodland Park Zoo here in Seattle. Uh, it's a really, really awesome little enclosure that has all these uh, monarchs and other beautiful butterflies that are flying through. And I was using the A1 and my 135 GM to track the butterflies. Um, the bursts that I captured were at high shutter speeds. Um, the first, you know, when I was first going, I was playing around with different shutter speeds. And when you're shooting erratic subjects like butterflies that are constantly moving around, uh, the best results are, you know, if you're at really high shutter speed. So uh, I was at about one, 2,000 or higher in these examples that you're seeing. Uh, you can see from my Atomos view that I started at one, 400, and then I realized that, you know, that's not fast enough to get really sharp photos. So uh, I switched it up to one, 2,000 because, you know, you have to be at one, 250th minimum anyway. So I just cranked it all the way up and um, was tracking these butterflies. So um, the other thing, when you're doing tracking like this, you got to pay attention to what subject detection mode you're in. So if it's set to human and you're looking to track animals uh, or birds, it's not going to know what algorithm to um, use to track that. So always make sure you, ch you check your uh, subject, subject detection mode. So I had mine set to animal and then, um, I paired it again with the 135 GM because of what we discussed a minute ago. It has the fastest motors. Uh, it also has a very wide aperture at f1.8. So being in relatively low light conditions, that allows me to keep you know cleaner images at higher shutter speeds. So um, yeah, the uh, 135 is what I used in these shots uh, for the speed of the AF motor. And as you can see in the, um, the video example here on the bottom, that's a 47 image burst from the A1. It uh, captured that entire sequence of that butterfly uh, flying roughly in about like under two seconds. Uh, you can see how the focusing points, uh, there's 730 plus, phase detection focusing po points that go all the way across the, um, the sensor of the A1. 
And that allows you to keep your subject in frame without having to do real drastic movements from side to side. Uh, I was able to shoot all of this handheld and you can see, you know, from my hand motions, I'm just barely moving a little bit to keep that butterfly within the um, focus detection area of the A1. It goes to 92% of the sensor. So it's almost completely edge to edge, meaning, you know, you get that advantage of not needing to make drastic movements and, and you know, miss a shot or get a uh, misfocused shot. So um, keeping, you know, keeping my eyes so low and not having to move so fast and cranking my shutter allowed me to get really cool butterfly bursts like that. So the other thing is, you know, knowing which focus area to use is also important when you're trying to, to you know, shoot high-speed subjects. The A1 has so many different uh, focusing modes that, um, you know, you can use um, expandable tracking, you can use zone focus. But in this case, if you want to have the phase detection basically cover the entire image frame, uh, use wide. That's that's what I found gave me the best results in this scenario. Um, I had it set to wide. And again, like we already discussed, it was using all of the 759 phase detection points all the way to the edges of the frame, making sure I didn't have to use too much um, movements in my hands. So let's look at our next example. So after we captured those butterflies, we went ahead and moved on to the botanical gardens at the Woodland Park Zoo, where you're gonna see this really cool example of a burst of images that I got with this bird that was eating, um, I think it's like a seed or uh, some cool berry that he was eating. I caught the entire progression of him, you know, picking it up, throwing it back uh, within a matter of a couple of seconds. So. Uh, the total number of images that you're seeing in that bottom video is 53. And um, the other thing is that when shooting birds, you know, I always try to keep a safe distance to get like a, you know, a good shot without scaring the bird off. And in this situation, I used uh, one of my favorite lenses for bird photography, which is this guy right here. This is the Sony 200 to 600. Uh, amazing, really lightweight for the amount of range that it has, and um, also has a very, very small zoom throw. So when you're out there shooting, you know, and let's say you're handheld like this, uh, if if the lens, you know, goes in and out too far, it's going to throw off your weight, throw off all the little movements in your hand and, you know, cause you to miss shots or have misfocused shots. But this is an internal zooming lens that has a very short zoom throw. So you can quickly go from 200 to 600 in just one swipe. So using this with the A1 uh, is an amazing pairing for bird photography. Uh, it is capable of 30 frames per second as well. It's on the approved list of 30 frames per second lenses. And um, it's amazingly sharp. It's a beautiful image coming out of this lens. Uh, just an amazing pairing with the A1. So. This was the lens that I used to get those shots that you're seeing right there on the screen. Um, the mode that I'd love to use for birds, you know, obviously we have eye autofocus, which you can see, you know, in the Atomos view right there of the video. Uh, but birds moving so much faster than butterflies necessitated a totally different uh, focusing area for me. I love using expand spot tracking. Uh, because you can, you know, initiate your focus on a specific point, and then once it locks onto that point, it sticks to it like glue. So you don't have to re-engage focus. It it goes from um, spot to tracking autofocus, and so that's what I use with birds. It's my favorite uh, setting to use. I can see if I can show you guys that here real quick to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So let's take a look at the overhead cam again. All right, so with my focusing modes, see if I can show you guys that. For the butterflies, I was using the wide, uh, which gives you the entire, um, pretty much the entire frame of the A1's uh, focus points. But when I'm using uh, tracking for birds, that's the one that I love using. 
it's a tracking expense spot. So when you initiate focus, it starts as that little square, which, you know, see if I can show you guys, I can pretty much put it anywhere. I'm within my focusing distance, but then once I place it there, you see that it just stays on the initial focus point that I, that I locked with that spot. So say that's the bird. I just kind of put it there and then it goes from there. My hands kind of shaky, but you guys get it. That's, that's the mode right there that I, I love to use when tracking birds. And it's the mode that I use with the 200 to 600 for the example bird shots that you guys saw. So let's move on. I'll take another quick pause. Scott, any other questions? So far, so far. So far we're, we're rolling good. All right, let's keep going. So from the bird tracking, we moved on to the baby gorilla, the cutest, one of the cutest things you can capture at a zoo. Um, again, I was using the A1 with the 135 GM. I love shooting the 135 GM uh, in low light situations. It's, it's such a fast focusing lens which, with such a fast aperture, it's really great. And you can see in this example, I switched my subject detection to um, animal. See if I can show you guys how I have that set up again. So over here in my FN menu, I have it programmed to be able to quickly select the, uh, the different subject detection modes. So there you go. Um, you just have to make sure you flip it to the right mode that you're looking for. So in this case, yeah, animal for the, the gorilla. And once I had it set to that, then the high speed eye autofocus tracking immediately detected the gorilla and locked onto his eye. And you can see in this burst example, that is 60 images all uh, focused from the A1. Uh, so in low light as well, it's, it's really amazing. The autofocus, I forgot to note what the uh, sensitivity is. It's gotta be at least minus three or minus four higher EV because it can, you know, nail it in low light conditions. Uh, this one, you know, wasn't really that far below, but that's because I'm using ISO to compensate. The ISO performance on the A1 is also phenomenal. Uh, I had a lot of my friends ask me if what they're seeing is coming out of the A7S, but the A1 is just as good, if not better in uh, ISO performance. So yeah, amazing, amazing results there with animal uh, eye autofocus tracking. And so once we did that, you know, we shot butterflies, we shot birds, we shot some other animals like a leopard and, you know, the gorilla. We headed on over to our next location, which was the high-speed sports action. Um, this was a lot of fun. We had a football with us. Uh, we had our athlete, Ni. Uh, thank you very much, Ni, for, for coming with us on this shoot. But we went to the racetrack and the goal was to shoot the same things that we shot at the zoo, high speed burst photos, uh, and then show you guys examples of slow motion videos and what the A1 is capable of in its video uh, settings. There's amazing capabilities. Um, so as we go through the sports action examples, what we're gonna be covering is um, sprinting photo shots some high bursts of him running straight at the camera. And then we're going to be covering slow motion video at 4K 120 and 1080 240, which is exclusive to the S and Q and slow and quick mode of the A1. Uh, really cool thing that not a lot of people use, uh, but it's like a hidden gem that is really, really amazing for slow motion. Very convenient. So we'll go over those examples. We'll talk about how to set your camera up for the 4K 120 and the S and Q mode. And then you know, show you some examples of what we got. So uh, as we got to the racetrack, we, whoops, there we go. Whoops, where am I? Sorry, guys. Eh. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. But yeah, here are some of the examples of what we did over at the racetrack. So take a look at how incredible the A1s uh, 120 calculations per second are in auto exposure and autofocus. Um, so at the track, 
the um, A1 was able to keep up with one of the hardest things in photography, which is someone sprinting a full blast directly towards the camera. Uh, the Bion's XR processor in the A1 is stacked with integral memory into the CMOS, allowing for those calculations to talk back and forth through the processing engine extremely fast. Um, so the focusing calculation, the exposure calculations, all of that stuff is all stacked together and allows this level of performance. If you look at that first right there, 75 images and every single one of them were in focus. Um, really incredible. So we had a 45 image burst right there. And then we had the 75 image burst that you'll see through the viewfinder of the A1. Uh, that's another amazing thing about the A1 is that the viewfinder. Uh, the viewfinder has a very, very high resolution a very high frame rate, and it's blackout free. So when you're looking through there, there isn't any instance where you're shooting and you're seeing a black frame. It's as if you're watching a video when you shoot with the A1. It's pretty amazing to have. You can see it in the EVF, but I love looking through there when I'm shooting high speed action. I don't have to worry about tracking my subject because it never goes dark. Um, so it's another really great feature of the A1. Um, now. Again, when we were at the track, everything that I shot with me was shot with the 50 millimeter F1.2 G Master. Uh, this is probably another one of my most used, most favorite prime lenses. Uh, it's super, super fast. It uses the XD linear uh, motors. And so, again, as the A1 is trying to track me sprinting, the motors in the 51.2 are just racking back and forth fast enough to keep up with it. So. Everything I shot in photo and video was shot handheld with the A1 and the 51.2 GM. A lot of it wide open at 1.2. So it shows you that it can perform even with such a wide aperture, no problem. So uh, the hit rates were perfect. The settings were all dialed in like we discussed previously. We were set to uh, AFC, high plus. The raw was set to compressed. Um, the shutter was obviously way above 1 250th, and I was using a compatible lens. Um, the other thing you want to keep in mind, I, we're going to touch on this, but um, is the type of memory card that you're using. Um, now, the A1 supports V60, V90, and of course, C, uh, CF Express type A cards. The difference isn't necessarily in how many shots you can you know, burst before the buffer fills. The difference is how quickly the buffer clears uh, for you to continue to shoot as if there wasn't a buffer. And the greatest benefit in that scenario comes from using a CF type A card. So uh, with the Sony A1 having both of those slots, see if I can show you guys that real quick. If you look on the side here, get my overhead figured out here. You can see it has two slots side by side. One is for SD right there, but then to the side of that, in that little tiny gap is where the CFA type uh, card can go. And so when you're shooting the bursts with the A1, you get roughly anywhere between 130 and 150 images before the buffer will start to try and clear. Um, what I found is with the SD card, it can take, depending on the speed of the SD card that you're using, it can take anywhere from, uh, 30 seconds to a minute to clear that buffer. Whereas if you go with the CF type A, it's drastically faster, like about you know nine seconds to clear the entire buffer on the A1. So in essence, if you use a CF A card, it's as if you don't have a buffer because you know you're shooting, it's clearing, you're shooting, it's clearing, and it just keeps going and going and going. So that's a bonus tip for you guys. Uh, again, the whole adage about having a Ferrari and using diesel fuel. If you got the A1, definitely go with the CF type A for all of your fast, fast, ultra fast um, action needs. All right. So now we're going to get into some of our settings to set the camera up for slow motion video. Um, now, 
In addition to being a speed demon in photography, the A1 is also a flagship video camera. Um, it has a lot of cinema features. It can shoot everything from 8K 30P to 4K 120 to 1080 240. And it does all of that with 10-bit color depth and really amazing high dynamic range picture profiles like S-Log3. Uh, it also features S-Cinetone, which is a picture profile that um, came from Sony's cinema line. And if you're doing any kind of um, HDR work, it also has HLG 2 and 3, where you can just shoot and immediately deliver high dynamic range video right out of the camera. So um, the A1's features are amazing in photo and video. And you know creators can quickly shoot all kinds of different types of video from HDR to slow motion um, and other types of video that you can just quickly use straight out of camera. So what we're going to look at here in this slide and on the camera is the steps you want to take and consider for setting up the camera to get 4K 120 in this case. Um, so the very first thing you want to do, let's go back to our overhead, is we're going to want to set the main dial to movie mode. So we're looking at main dial again right here. You can see it has this little uh, film strip. So what you're going to want to do is just flick it over to the film strip. And then now it's in video record mode. Um, so once you've done that, then what you're going to want to do is, again, change your focus dial to AFC. Uh, when you're recording video, you know your subjects are moving, you're moving. So you're always going to want your focus to be moving with your subjects as well. So make sure you're set into AFC there. And then uh, in the focusing mode, that's where you're going to want to make your next change. So uh, depending on the type of subject you're shooting and you know where they are, are they stationary, are they moving, that's when you want to consider the type of focusing mode you're using. So for me, I tend to just use wide. And again, with wide, that gives you the full coverage of the A1 sensor. So as your subject moves around, the tracking and focus will continue to move with your subject. So let's um, look at what that means. So when you're in those modes, again, you want to pay close attention to what type of subject you're videoing. So um, you know the eye autofocus tracking in real time is available for humans in video mode as well. So if you've inadvertently changed your subject detection to animal, you know, or bird and you're shooting a human, you're going to want to make sure you check that before you start your video. So make sure you've always got your subject detection set correctly. Now, after you've done that, you're going to want to go to the shooting menu again and make sure that your video exposure mode is set to what you want. When you're filming videos, you know, when you, if you just got your A1, you can have it do all of that exposure work for you just by setting it to uh, program auto. That's in the uh, shooting menu under your exposure mode. So if you go into that and see if I can show you guys that real quick. So the menu options change depending on which mode you're in. So keep that in mind too. So if you're looking for these settings and you're like, well, why don't I see them? It's because you may not have it set to the film strip. So make sure if you're doing, you're looking for video settings that you're in the video mode. So you can see here, once you're in video mode, you can go to the shooting menu. And if you go down to shooting mode, and then you go over to exposure mode, this is where you control how the A1's exposure is going to be available. Either you can do full on automatic, or you can do aperture priority, you can do shutter priority, or how I like to do it is in full manual control. So make sure you made that change. Otherwise, you're going to be trying to set, you know, change your shutter and your aperture and your ISO, and you're going to be wondering why isn't the camera responding. It's because that exposure mode needs to be specified. So once you've got that done, uh, the next thing to consider is going to be um, what image quality settings do you want? There is a plethora of codecs 
and color profiles available. So you're going to want to tell the camera what the codec is that you want to use depending on what you're shooting. So if you're going to be doing some really heavy color grading and you want the most amount of data available to you, you might use something like the XAVC um, I, XAVC SI 4K. That gives you a, a very, very high quality file. Um, but then the trade-off there is that it's a very, very large file size. So uh, look through those settings, and those settings are in the uh, shoot menu under image quality. So when you go in there, pick the codec that you want, depending on the file size and the amount of uh, compression that you want. And then once you've got that locked in, the next step is to look at the, uh, the frame rate. So in 4K, you have access to uh, 24, 30, 60, and 120. So you want to go into that setting in the shooting menu, again, under the record settings, and specify, uh, you know, it's in, in the, sorry, in the record frame rate settings, you want to specify whether, you know, what frame rate you want. So in this case, in this example, what you're looking at, that's 120p, which is a lot of frames allowing you, you know, a lot of slow motion. It's 5x slow motion. Uh, so uh, once you've got that dialed in, then the, the other considerations are whether you shoot an 8-bit or 10-bit and um, which picture profile you're going to choose. So we kind of went over picture, uh, picture profiles a little bit earlier, but uh, there's S-Log 3, which is amazing. I believe it's like 13 to 14 stops of dynamic range that you can get while shooting S-Log 3. That also happens to be my perfect, uh, personal favorite. I use S-Log3 a lot in high dynamic range light. It preserves a ton of highlight and shadow detail. It's almost impossible to clip. I love S-Log3. Um, and then I'll, for you know everyday stuff, I'll pair it with the XABC um, S4K, which is 100 megabits per second with 10 bit color depth. So that combination is my favorite go-to for video once I've selected the resolution, the frame rate and everything else I'm going to be shooting. So again, I'll try to make this PDF available for you guys so you can quickly reference it. Uh, the A1 is extremely powerful and it makes it very handy to have uh, you know, a list of things to run down to make sure that you're fully locked into the setting and the video mode that you're going to go for. Um, so that's basically it. We want to make sure we have control of our exposure. We want to have control over the frame rate, the codec, and the color depth that we're going to be using. And then finally, we want to have control over the picture profile. So whether it's shooting an S-log to get a really flat image for color grading later, or if you want an image that's ready to go straight out of camera, you can use picture profile 11, which is a Cinetone. Uh, that is a beautiful picture profile that came over from the uh, Sony Cinema camera. So for times when I need to just shoot and deliver, I'll usually use Picture Profile 11 as Cinetone. Uh, and again, if I'm working in HDR, I'll use uh, HLG profiles, which just immediately export HDR video. It's amazing. So those are just some of the steps um, to get your camera ready for 4K 120. And then you can take it a step further. Now with the SNQ slow and quick mode of the uh, A1, there is a little hidden gem that probably not a lot of people use or know about, which is the ultra slow 10x slow motion, uh, 1080 to 40 FPS. So just like we set the camera up for the 4K mode, there are certain things you want to do here uh, that are in different sections of the menu. So the exposure mode that you set for regular video is separated into its own section under SNQ video. So over here, I cover with you how you can uh, choose the codec. Uh, so in this case, the XAVC SI HD is the highest quality codec you can get while shooting 1080 240 in SNQ mode. And the, the bit rate for that changes depending on whether you're using SD card, V90 card, or a uh, CFA card. If you use CFA, you get a much higher bit rate. That's incredibly high, really high quality footage. So go into the SNQ settings of the video, set your exposure mode again to what you want. It, it's very powerful, it allows you full control. So you can shoot auto and SNQ, manual SNQ, whatever you want. 
So make sure you set that exposure mode. Uh, but then the two other important things when you're in SNQ are the resolution uh, that it records at, the frame rate that it records at, and the frame rate that it converts to. Because SNQ isn't like regular uh, video footage in that when you're shooting slow, it is actually slowing that footage down and then it's ready to use right out of the camera in slow motion. So those are the two things to consider when you're using this mode is that um, in regular video, there's, sorry, my dachshund is wanting out of the room. Uh, but yeah, when you're shooting regular video, you get audio with your file, but when you're shooting um, S and Q, there's no audio and the video is already slowed down. So keep that in mind when you're shooting this mode. But once you set the record frame rate and you set the frame rate, the, so those two settings in S and Q that tell it uh, how far to slow it down, uh, you just set again your color mode. So if you want a Cinetone or if you want uh, S log, you set those as well. And then it's simply you just shoot it just like I did here. I just shot it handheld uh, and it came out of the camera like this. So uh, what you're seeing is exactly what comes out of the camera. It's already slowed down, it's already got the picture profile, everything is pre selected and good to go. So that is one hidden gem of the A1. The S and Q. Make sure you definitely check that out. And so we'll quickly go over some of the gear breakdown, and then we can hop into some Q and A. So, as you guys already saw with my gear, uh, I use the A1 for the shoot. I use the 35 GM, which is currently uh, on my A1 itself. So that's this beauty right here uh, for a lot of the. Uh, B-roll and behind the scenes video that you guys saw was captured. Uh, you know, stuff of me was captured with the A7S Mark III and the 35GM and the uh, 24 to 105 F4 uh, OSS lens. So those were the uh, lenses and camera that we use for all the behind the scenes footage that you're seeing. Um, but when I was shooting, I was shooting either with the uh, the 50GM, this beautiful prime right here, or I was shooting with this baby, the uh, 135 GM. So those were the two lenses. And then when I was shooting birds, I was shooting this guy right here, the 200 to 600. Uh, everything with the A1, of course. And so in addition to that, uh, in each of those sequences, if you go back and watch that video, the gorilla sequence was with the 135 GM. The butterfly sequence was with the 135 GM. Birds were, again, with the 200 to 600. And then everything that we saw, uh, shot at the track with me was with the 50 GM. My vocals, they were caught uh, using this guy right here. It's one of my favorite setups for audio. I, I use it a lot uh, when I'm out in the field because it's super convenient. It has this uh, digital interface shoe that just pops right into the A1, uh, right here into the hot shoe. You don't need any wires. You don't really need any batteries in here. It has its own built-in battery and then it feeds off of the Sony uh, A1's built-in battery. So this guy right here is called the ECM W2BT for Bluetooth wireless audio system. Uh, this was what you guys hear all my vocals on when you're watching the video directly into the A7S Mark III. Um, and we already discussed the 24 to 105. And so there's a few people that I needed to thank that helped me with the production. Uh, that was Mr. Peter Kim of Peak Digital Cinema, uh, Nick Pham, and also our model, Ni Okaija. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to Woodland Park Zoo for allowing us to shoot there. And obviously a big thank you to H event space for hosting us and for Sony Alpha for giving me the opportunity to share this knowledge with you guys. I know there's a lot packed in there to, to fit into a uh, one hour presentation, but I'm going to try and make this uh, PDF available for anyone who wants to go through there. And obviously, you guys will be able to reach out to me online. You can find me everywhere on social channels uh, with my handle at rmalieri, or you can reach out on my website at rmalieri.com. And with that, I believe we have left ourselves 
roughly 15 minutes ish uh 10 minutes ish for any q a yeah awesome reza thank you thank you like i said i knew you were going to pack a ton of information <laughs> and i think i think you summed it up best by saying you know an, an hour is not enough time to do it full justice because there's just so much information and and so much in the nitty-gritty to get to so i think you did an amazing job you did wonderful. thank you scott you, you this guy me. is so powerful it's really difficult to like put it all in one hour but um that's why we're available for you guys, you know, after the fact. There's tons of amazing education on the BNH event space all the time. And um, I'm always around. Yeah, I love I love the plug. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and, and I definitely I definitely hope that that you're able to share that PDF at some point. Um, so I would I would definitely recommend if you're not already and you want to get more information, definitely give Reza a follow because I'm sure he'll post that PDF uh, at some point. And you know, unfortunately, we all know Zoom is it's it's Zoom, and you know they always they always like to kind of compress everything, and so you can't read everything. So. I know, I know Rez is a great guy and I know that he's going to get that out there and get that information for everybody because he's just, he's, he's super thorough. He's a, he's a guy true to my heart. I love his thoroughness in it. So appreciate you on that. And I uh, appreciate, you know, the, 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 the lengths you take to share that education with all of us and to give us the, all that information. Um, I wanted to go back to something you said in there and you talked about shooting, shooting in manual mode. And so before, before everybody cancels me and goes, get this guy off the channel and he doesn't know what he's talking about, I'll just <laughs> preface it with saying, I, I understand why to shoot in manual, but there might be some people out there who don't. Um, and so I'll pose the question like this, with a camera that can do so much, it's such a powerful camera. I mean, you're talking over 700 points of phase auto detection, over 75 frames per second, 4K 120, so many different things. And, and, you know, that's just, a small little tidbit into what it can do, but why shouldn't somebody just pick up a camera like this and just leave it in auto all the time? Oh, um, they absolutely <laughs> should, Scott. I believe, I believe that they should. I, I feel like when you're first getting started with something as powerful and, and, you know, intricate as the A1, that will actually help boost your confidence because it, it might seem really overwhelming to pick it up and think that you're just going to master it overnight. So de definitely, like Scott says, there's absolutely nothing wrong with shooting in auto mode. And in fact, um, you know, in auto mode, it can create absolutely breathtaking images. You know, you could put it in auto mode, point it at a bird and get a shot that you know, might take you years to try and learn in manual mode. So I think there's a time and a place for that in terms of one, helping creators to hit the ground running with learning a new camera. Uh, but also in terms of convenience, it's super convenient to just put it in auto mode and get some amazing photos. So, um, you know, I'm definitely a big fan of auto mode. I just like to show things in manual so that you can kind of understand the underlying fundamentals. Uh, but there's multiple ways that you can uh, set the A1 up to either do full auto for you or, you know, get you 85% of the way, like things like aperture priority, uh, auto ISO. It's really powerful where you can tell it to, you know, maintain a certain shutter speed and then even set parameters within like something like auto ISO where you give it a certain range that you don't want it to go beyond, you know, 100 to 3,200 or whatever your preference is. So that's the beauty of cameras like this. They're racehorse Ferraris if you want them to be, or they're everyday family cameras if you just want to use them quickly. Definitely. And, and that kind of leads me into sort of the next thing, because obviously the, the Alpha One is, is kind of at this point, the, one of the flagship cameras right? You know, it's, it's the higher end of, of the list. And, you know, like you said, it, it may or may not be for you. You know, what, what, when, when you're looking at a camera, when you're making a decision into purchasing something, especially with the, with the Sony line, where there's so many great cameras that they do produce, you know, how do you recommend somebody dissect what they should purchase? For sure. I think that's one of the most important things for, for someone that's 
wanting to learn um, or someone that has a specific need is looking at uh, what's most important to you and then finding the right match. Um, in this presentation right now, we have three different cameras, you know, the A7S III, which is the specialized in video that's recording me right now. We had the incredible small little pocketable ZV-1, which doubles as an amazing overhead camera. And of course we had the A1. So depending on what your needs are, there's something that can fit you all along the lineup from the ZV-1 to the ZV-E10 to the 6600 in APS-C uh, to our full frame cameras here, all the way up to the cinema line in the FX3, FX6, FX9. So that's the beauty you know, of it is just talking to someone knowledgeable like Scott at B&H um, to let them know what it is that's important to you. And then they're you know, more than capable of making the right recommendation that fits those needs for you. You are you are far too kind by calling me knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm barely at best knowledge, but I, I do appreciate the kind words. Um, one one thing I want to touch on and I want to ask your opinion on is something that I don't think we focus enough on, especially from Sony, is is their lens line. And you know, they've got a great line of lenses. What's, what's your go-to? If you've got to pick one lens out of that line, I mean, maybe that's a tough question and not a fair question, but you know, if you're going to go out for the day, it, there it is, 50G. Yeah, so I'm hopefully going to end up doing a publication on why this particular focal length is, in my opinion, the perfect prime. I feel like the 50 has so many different merits in terms of why it's the absolute perfect prime lens. Um, it happens to be the focal length that our eyes see in real life and nature. Uh, but in photography, it, in my opinion, is super versatile in that if you take it a step back, you get the classic, you know, like 35 millimeter uh, field of view. Or if you take it a step forward, you're starting to approach the classic portrait field of view in the 85 millimeter. Um, so the majority of my portrait work, if you look at my Instagram account for the past you know, a couple of, or however long the 50s been out has been with this guy right here. So if, if I'm doing portraiture, this is my go-to. Uh, it's always in my bag and it has a gorgeous wide, you know, F1.2 aperture. Uh, it's tack sharp, beautiful color rendering, SD linear motors, that 50 1.2 GM, absolute favorite when it comes to portraiture. But as you can see, you know, this incredible wide angle, uh, super fast prime. This is a 20 millimeter F1.8, fast aperture, really small, portable for carry wide angle shots. I shoot commercial video productions with this guy in low light. It's amazing. Uh, paired with the A7S, uh, the classic 85 millimeter GM right here. Uh, one of my favorite portrait lenses. It has a gorgeous rendering at F1.4. If you're looking for the highest MTF results, this is probably one of the sharpest lenses in the Sony lineup at the 135 GM. And then over in my uh, dehumidifier that you can see over there, my cold case, I like to call it, uh, the 24 to, G, uh, 24 to 70 GM Mark II is my go-to zoom carry. Uh, and I have the brand new 16 to 35 F4 PZ, the power zoom. Amazing wide angle lens for gimbal work, video work. Um, so it's kind of a loaded question, but if I'm going for portraits, my go-to is my 50 GM. If I'm going for everyday carry all around her, I'm grabbing the 24 to 70 GM Mark II. Awesome. I was going to say 50, 50 GM portrait and then, and then just get everything else just because. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's just so much. The 35 is a beautiful, you know, this is a beautiful classic uh, prime portrait uh, focal length for uh, wide angle, you know, landscape portraiture, landscape photos, video work. Uh, the videos that you guys saw in our showcase used the 35 GM. So I, I don't think there's a lens that isn't available in the lineup. Awesome. Well, Reza, that about wraps it up. I want to say thanks again to you for being here. Just a reminder to everybody, check them out on Instagram. Our Mal Mal Maliari, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a tongue twister. <laughs> Our Maliari is where you guys can find me 
right there. There it is. There it is. That's a lot. That's a lot easier. Throw it up on the screen this way. This way <laughs> I don't have to twist my tongue, but check them out. Special thank you, like you said before, to our sponsors for the event, Sony. Uh, go check them out if you want to see the A1 in action or any of the wonderful lenses. There's a great store, 34th Street in the city, 9th Avenue, called B&H. Tell them you, tell them you know me. They'll possibly kick you out of the store. <laughs> but Reza, thank you again so much. Everybody at home, thank you for tuning in. That's all we have for you tonight. This has been another edition of the B&H Virtual Event Space. We'll catch you next time.